Good morning, church family. It's good to see everybody here this morning. Will you please bow your heads as I pray? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, God, for all the things that you do for us, Lord. Please, God, we give you all the glory that we can possibly give to you, Lord. We know that nothing we can say or do can measure up to all that you are, our Lord, but we thank you for all that you do, God. Please, God, open our ears, open our hearts, open our minds to hear the word today and to praise and worship you, Father. Thank you, God, for this day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Announcements for today. Please remember to turn off your cell phones. That's number one on my list. Um, as usual, on every Sunday, we have Sunday school service. It is also available on Zoom. That is at 10 a.m. Morning services start at 11 a.m., so we always invite you and welcome you to our Sunday school and our morning services. We will have a public committee meeting today at 1230. Tuesday at 1.30, we have the ladies' Bible study. And Wednesday at 7 we have um, classes for children and for youth and for all ages, so please come out on Wednesday nights if you can as well. Our form from the nomination committee is due today. Right, Aaron? Yes. <laughs> due today. So please get those in. I think you had a lot of forms in last, last Sunday, so. Got, got quite a few, yes. Very good. The Edna McMillan State Offering Goal is $800. And that will end on October 30th, so please contribute to the Edna McMillan um, Fund. Coming up, Summer of Games, a doubleheader, volleyball and horseshoe tournament on September 25th. Please see Steph or Ange for details. So that will be probably out at, by the Old South Campus, maybe? Okay. And Chris was saying we might have snacks out there. Picnic? All right. So we may have snacks and a picnic out there. We will have a business meeting um, next Sunday as well. So members, please join that as well. Our fall fundraiser will be September 30th with a garage sale and Indian taco sale. This fundraiser will fund several missions for the church. And you can see all the other notes in your bulletin. Please remember to send your bulletin out to anyone that's not here today that you know is not here so you can remind them of all the different things that we're doing here at the church. Reach out to absent members with your bulletin. And um, remember to thank all of those people that come here and work. Sonny replaced a broken window that we had out there. I know, of course, Chris, Deacon Chris is always here working. Lincoln's here working. So please remember to thank all those people that come out here and, and do work as well. I know there's more than those that I just mentioned, but those are the ones that I know for sure are constantly out here as well. So at this time, I'm going to ask Debbie if she'll come up and do our prayer emphasis. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We want to continue to remember several on our prayer, prayer list. Kyle, he's kind of had a rough time, but I understand he got to come home Friday. Continue to remember RG. Jen Barnett hasn't been feeling too good with her allergies. Uh, Maggie. Carsey's dad, Cause, Addie and Dave, Sally, Darlene, Letha, Tobias, the McGillberry family, Jackie, the Alangos, the Colberts, the Green, our church, and that we need workers, and a van, and a facility, and our upcoming business meeting next week, and missionaries, both local and global. If you will, bow your heads as we pray for these requests. Our dear Heavenly Father, we count it such a privilege to come before you to bring these prayer requests. You know about each and every situation. You know each and every person. These that are facing illnesses, Lord, they are fearfully and wonderfully made by you, and you know them better than anyone else does know them. We just pray for the guidance of the doctors in making the decisions and the treatments for these different individuals, and we just pray that you give them peace and comfort in their hearts and in their minds and in their lives as they go through these illnesses, dear Lord. Let them cling to you for their um, 
their security and for their uh, comfort and peace. We just pray that you'll be with Jackie as she goes through such trying times and be with the McGill McGillberry family as they have lost a loved one. Give them peace and comfort and the knowledge of knowing that you are there with them. We just pray that you'll be <coughs> with the Alungas and their missionary work in Africa. Give them protection. Give them the boldness to speak your word. We pray for the Colberts as they minister to us here at Indian Nation Baptist. And we pray for the Greens as, as they uh, oversee several churches in our association. Just give them the strength and knowledge to carry on that work each and every day. And we pray for our church and the many needs that we have here and for those that have volunteered to um, seek nominations for different positions in our church. We're in desperate need of workers, those that are willing to follow the call. We also would could use a van for our ministry and are looking forward to a new facility as you would have it be your will, dear Lord. We pray that you'll be with the upcoming business meeting. Give us all a peace of mind and to seek your will. Guide us in our decision making at that time. We just pray that you'll be with the missionaries, both those locally and in our state and in our country, as well as globally. They face many dangers throughout their, their work for the Lord, and we just pray that you'll be with them in a very special way. Be with Brother Randy as he brings our message today to open our hearts, our minds, our ears. Be receptive to the word that you have for us. We ask these many things in your name. Amen. Good morning, church. If you all would uh, stand as we begin worship this morning. Um, our first song will be in the hymnal, and it is on page 385. one in the hymnal. Sweet 
the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. Through this far and grace will lead me home the lord has promised good to me his words my hope secure he will my shield and portion be as long as life endures when we God's praise than when we first begun. Um, our next song is um, Yet Not I, But Through Christ in Me. gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer. There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus. The night is dark, but I am not forsaken. For by my side, the Savior, He will stay. I labor on in weakness and rejoicing. For in my need, His power is displayed. To this I hold, my shepherd will defend. It has been paid for Jesus bled and suffered for my pardon and he was raised to overthrow the follow Jesus for he has said that he will bring me home 
and day by day I know he will renew me until I stand with joy before the throne to this I hold my hope is only Jesus all the glory evermore to him when the race is complete still my lips shall repeat yet not I but through Christ in me when the complete still my lips shall repeat yet not I but through Christ in me yet not I but through Christ in me like to take this opportunity to wave and greet each other and then you can have a seat. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so now is the time that I like to open up the floor for testimonies. Anybody? I got one right here. My our, our brother Kyle is in attendance. It's a blessing right there. Anybody else? Thank you, Debbie. I gather gather strength from from your your love and dedication. I really do.
Thank you, Carl. <clears throat> we love you very much, and we're, we're with you all the way. Um. <clears throat> Anyone else? Okay, um, at this time, I'm going to ask Stephanie to pray over our tithes and offerings. See 
Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Kelly. That was a good one. Um, Okay, so now uh, this is the time where we're going to read the scripture reading part in our bulletin. Um, I'm going to read aloud and y'all just read with me. Now to him who is able to do above and beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Please bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you for this, bringing us together, Lord, for this day, for our pastor. Lord, just, just bless us, Father, with a good word. Thank you for everything. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Take a hymnal, <clears throat> if you will. You feel turned towards the back. Number 577, what we used to call the responsive reading. <clears throat> Our subject matter for the beginning today and through the month of October will be the church. Okay. And uh, I wanted to engage in this, <clears throat> so if you will, if you'll stand with me, you'll see there where it says leader, I'll read that part, and then everybody respond on the congregation part. And then at the last, it says all. So <clears throat> that's the way we'll read it, okay? <clears throat> when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? He saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever shalt thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. <clears throat> the and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread, and in prayers. And all that believed were together, and had all things common. And they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. <laughs> and 
and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> The book of Ephesians when you read the the book of Ephesians the value of it and the <clears throat> the purposefulness of the book it's like an anthem. <clears throat> you know, we have our national anthem. You know, when, that's, when that is sung, people stand up. You know, they stand and put their hand over their chest, over their heart, and they sing that song, the Pledge of Allegiance, so forth. But the book of Ephesians is much like an anthem of the sovereign grace of God. Think about that for a second. Think about those words, a sovereign grace of God. And what is grace? Grace is simply what God does because he loves us. We don't deserve it. We can never do anything to merit it, to gain it. He just does it. He shows his favor. What you have and what we have gone through in these past months and looking even forward, what we have to endure <clears throat> will get us through those times because again, it's the sovereign grace of God. The other day I was, <clears throat> I was able to go and visit with Kyle and, and uh, Jamie and uh, I knew that was a day <clears throat> that I was going to be there. Uh, <clears throat> in fact, when I parked, I didn't even have any money to put in that little machine. I was tearing up my back seat looking for coins and quarters or nickels or anything to put in that machine because it was expired. And I thought, I might get towed, or I might get a ticket. But as I was, I, I was standing there, I thought, no, I'm here for a purpose. I could have parked further down, you know, but it had been a long walk. But I parked there, and I thought, no, I'm here for a purpose. I'm going to go visit my brother. And so I just closed the doors, walked across the street, went up, found Jamie, was able to talk to Kyle. I think we talked more about OU football, didn't we? Didn't we pray? No, just kidding. <clears throat> we was talking about the team. We was talking about church. We talked about things. But then we got down to the matter of praying. I kind of, I, I was, I enjoyed it because that there was a nurse in there. She was in there also. She was praying. I, I, I just noticed her praying with us. And we simply ask God to just do what only he can do. Wednesday night, if you were here Wednesday night, I, I think we had an awesome prayer time, didn't we? Just, it was just a good time just, just to pray. But we do that together as a church. I don't know what we would do if we didn't have anybody to pray for us I don't know what would become if we didn't pray but that's just one of the benefits one of the great benefits of being the church 
as we get into October, I was, I was going to do this next Sunday, but I forgot. Next Sunday is communion. I might touch a little bit on it, but next Sunday is communion. But in following days, I want to take a closer look at what does the Bible say about the body, okay? Not, not this awesome-looking body up here, but, you know, <clears throat> a body in general as it relates to the church, the skeletal system, the muscular system, the, the senses of the physical body, again, in relation to what the church is all about. Because I want to be able to see all of us in a light of what we see in Acts chapter 2. And from this responsive reading, the, the, the gloriousness of what God does through the church. I've been in churches before where it's been kind of scary. You get there and you feel like there's nothing there. It may be full, full house, but there's nothing there. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing. People are there, shaking hands, but something's just not there. Then I've been in churches where there, there's a divisive spirit. It's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. Then I've been in churches where there have been very few. Went with my cousin. We went to a church down in Red Oak, Oklahoma. There was only three of us. My cousin did the preaching. I led the singing. And there's one, one member out there. He was sitting there. It was kind of funny because we said, man, we had 100% come forward during the invitation. <clears throat> As I came forward to pray, and that guy came down. He, I don't know what his decision was, but man, 100%. But in that, just three of us, it was a glorious time. Just three of us. But I want you to understand that God has given us the church. Not so much as a, a building or a body of believers, because you, you are a part of that church. Somebody asks a question, what is the church? You say, I am. I am a part of the church. I am the church. And in the passage that we see here in the book of Ephesians, again, it's this, this book is like, like the anthem of the New Testament to God's sovereign grace to us. Because if you read, if, as you read it, you'll see a few things, you'll see a few subjects. And one of those is, it contains some bad news. There's some bad, there's some bad news here. Because one of the things it says, it says you are dead in your trespasses and sins. Before we come to know the Lord, because be, before we come to know his grace and his gift to us, we are dead in trespasses and sins. But then that's, that's opposite of the good news. The good news is, but God made us alive. He quickened us. He made us alive in Christ Jesus. And then, a little bit further into the book, you'll see it in view, in view of what God has done and the view of what we see and what has taken place in the book of Ephesians, because it's a rich book. I mean, spiritually speaking, Ephesians is a very rich book. Paul tells the fellow believers to walk worthy of the calling we have received. To walk worthy of it. And so, chapter 3. Uh, <clears throat> I, I'll get to chapter 1 and 2 a little later, probably in October. But I want to read this again. Chapter 3, verse 20. And this was, our, this was in our bulletin. You have to read the... You have to read the well, actually, chapter one and two, but three especially. Let me let me and let me read that, and I'm reading from the Holman Christian Standard Version. 
And it says, for this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ on behalf of you Gentiles, you have heard, haven't you, about the administration of God's grace that he gave to me for you. Remember, this, 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 book, is a, this book is a letter written to a group of believers, a church, okay? He said, the mystery was made known to me by revelation as I have briefly written above, and that's chapter two, chapter one and two. By reading this, you are able to understand my insight about the mystery of the Messiah. This was not made known to people in other generations as it is now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. The Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body and partners of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. I was made a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace, there's that word again, that was given to me by the working of his power. Notice that working of his power keep that in mind this grace was given to me the least of all the least of all the saints to proclaim to the gentiles the incalculable riches of the messiah and to shed light for all about the administration of the mystery hidden for ages in god who created all things this is so god's multifaceted wisdom may now be made known through the church it's not by from individual um, <clears throat> mountainside revelation, okay? What does it say? It's through the church. To the rulers and the authorities in the heavens, this is according to his eternal purpose accomplished in the Messiah, Jesus our Lord. In him, we have boldness and confident access through the faith in him, through faith in him, so then I ask you not to be discouraged over my afflictions on your behalf, for they are your glory. Paul, Paul, Paul wasn't experiencing the greatest of uh, missionary endeavors. Let's just put it that way, okay? Paul, Paul wasn't just this overpowering, just uh, um, <clears throat> go everywhere type of missionary. He was, but a lot of times he spent his time in prison, and this is one of those times. You know, he's locked up for the sake of the gospel. But then he says, I ask you not to be discouraged over my afflictions on your behalf, for they are your glory. For this reason, I kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. I pray that he may grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with power in the inner man through his spirit and that the Messiah may dwell in your hearts through faith. I pray that you being rooted and firmly established in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the length and the width and the height and the depth of God's love and to know the Messiah's love that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. How does that come? comes through the church. Oftentimes I've, <clears throat> I, uh, I burn things, okay. Um, in the wintertime, I make a fire in our fireplace. Um, I try to keep it hot for as long as we can <clears throat> to heat the, to heat the house. Um, oftentimes I, I have a burn pile on our property, it's got a, I got a little fence around it where I burn things like cardboard or tree limbs or things of that nature. In order for it to all be consumed, I have, I have to manage it. I kind of have to push the unburned parts back into the flames or the coals. Because once you get a coal away from the main fire, the source, the coal itself will turn dark and it'll get cool won't burn anymore. I often cook outside, not often, but <clears throat> on occasion. I like to grill. I grill our hamburgers. We have hamburgers. I grill them outside. Got to get the fire going. <clears throat> Let it begin to get the flames off of it, and then I begin to spread it out, but to keep it warm and to put the, and start cooking. <clears throat> but again, everything depends on the heat. <clears throat> has to be together, 
has to be there, not just spread out and just separated. If it was, it would soon go out. It would be extinguished or it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't serve its purpose. In the same sense, the same, it, it, as you read these things and these elements of the church, he says that you may be able to comprehend, that you may be able to enjoy, you may be able to, to support one another, to encourage one another, to, to build up the church, to be involved in the things of the church. Notice some of the things there in verse 14. He says, I, or he says, for this reason, I kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. I pray that he may grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power in the inner man through his spirit. In other words, our church is about convictions. And what's our, what's our main conviction? Our main conviction is to know that what we read here is the word of God. It cannot be taken apart, separated, or even applied to our general society. We cannot make it fit today's thinking like many are trying to do. We cannot take God's word and, 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 and just piecemeal it together to make people feel good in this generation. We need to read it in the context of what it was written for. And again, it was written out of the pure heart, the holiness of God, and given to us to live by. It tells us a story of God's work. It tells us a story of God's redemptive act to bring us into relationship with him. And as we have seen through the process of the ages coming up into Acts chapter 2, we see a birth, we see, we see a beginning, and that beginning is his church. Let me ask you something. Why'd you come today? Why'd you come to church today? I hope you didn't come by thinking, well, if I don't go, man, they'll wonder where I'm at. They might send me a nasty letter. Oh, I saw him last night at the concert. I wonder why he wasn't at church. Yeah. We were down here, too, yeah. for a little while. We didn't stay for the concert. but people, you, you might think people will wonder. Well, it ought not cross our minds, and we'll get to this passage in the book of Hebrews here in a little bit, but I, I, hope, I hope you're just driven to come to church. I hope you're just driven to want to be here and not have a guilt conscious if you can't. What do, we, what do we read here? He says, I pray that these things be a part of your life that these things would be an encouragement to you, even in difficult times. I, 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 I've chimed my little group me thing whenever, you, whenever I hear somebody or when somebody puts in a little message or pray for so-and-so or whatever. I got it chimed to a little sound. And I know when I hear that sound, if, I, if I'm able to at work, you know, I can I, I look at it and see what's going on. I'll push, punch the heart, you know. Why not print anything out, but punch the heart to know that I've acknowledged that and I'm going to pray. Or there's something on there about rejoicing. There's good news or a reminder of things about the church. The technology we have enables us to know that and to do that because, you know, when, of course, you know, when I was growing up, we didn't, we didn't know much about what's happening with members, you know, as we, as, as we were having church. We, we'd only see each other on Sunday morning, Wednesday night. Sometimes we only knew of things that would happen when somebody would call us on a rotary dial phone. You got to make sure nobody else was listening, though, because it was a party line. But that's the only way we, we knew. But now, 
technology is such that an, a, the, the instant a need appears or something happens that's worth rejoicing or a reminder should come, we see it instantaneously. I, I, I love that technology. I don't fully understand all of it. I don't, I don't even know how Twitter works. I don't, I don't know a lot of the other stuff, you know, photo, I don't, I just don't know. I have a hard time posting a birthday on Facebook, okay? So I, sometimes I just don't, because <clears throat> I mess it up. But we have the tools available to us to ensure that the continuity of our church will benefit. Okay. When we read about what Paul is trying to encourage us for, he makes all these encouragements to us. But look at verse 20. <clears throat> he says, now to him who is able If it wasn't for the Lord involved in the church, we would just have a community meeting, wouldn't we? There'd be no prayer, no praise, no scripture. Maybe just get together and have a meal. How people are doing, you know, doing, oh yeah, you know, so and so's this, so and so's that. We would just simply be a community without purpose, perhaps without any meaning. Oh, I gotta go to my meeting. But here it says, now to him. We have to understand that if you say yay or nay to me being the pastor of your church, this would not become Randy Colbert's church. I'd be co-workers with you, co-worshipers with you. It would not be my church. Brother Bill, he would have never said that this was his church. It's the Lord's church. We simply have the privilege and the honor to lead the church in its vision, in its ministry, in what it does in the community, and what it does for each and every one of us involved in our church. It's a privilege to do that. But he says, now to him, Praise and honor, worship to him because he's the one. Jesus is the one. Jesus is the reason we call ourselves Indian Nations Baptist Church. Met some people yesterday. Was able to tell them, yeah, I pastor a church just up the road here now. Oh, yeah, where is it at? Indian Nations. I said, oh, they, I, yeah, we know where that church is. I said, well, come see us. Come visit us. But it says, now to him. This doxology, it's kind of like a doxology. It's, it's, a, it's a time of worship, time of expression. Now to him. You know, if I was to sit here and say, now to Aaron. You know, I saw him at the tent yesterday. <clears throat> he gave me a water. Thank you, Brother Aaron. That would be what this verse is. Now to him. <clears throat> But we do, we lift up our praise and worship to the Lord because it was him who established the faith in the church. But it says, now to him who is able. I like that little passage. Even though it's not a complete sentence, it's not a complete finished sentence, but it just simply says, now to him who is able. It's a sentence that is sufficient. It's sufficient for the church, he is able. You know, we could, we, could, we could run a thousand programs through the church, VBS to everything under the sun, but if God's not in it, it's not gonna do much. It'd probably make people mad, wouldn't it? Probably make them upset. Well, they're mad at me because I didn't show up. But the verse says, now to him who is able. But notice what he's able to do. What does he say? 
to do above and beyond all that we ask or think. You know, as a church, we can probably think of high, lofty goals, can't we? We could ask for things that we might not be able to see. And we may ask for things that we might not even think, well, yeah, I don't know about that. You know, that's a little Pentecostal there. You know. <laughs> but we ask. He is able, it says, to do above and beyond all that we ask or think. Well, I can, I can think of a lot of things for church. Can't you? I can. Debbie brought that up in her prayer time. I, I heard her word, facilities. Sometimes we think about that and we think about price tag. And sometimes we'll think, oh, well, that's, that's too much money. Isn't it? That's what we do, don't we? That's just too much. That's, you know, that's just, you know, we don't have the funds. We don't, we don't have the money. Doesn't God? You believe God can do that? Let me, let me raise your hand. You believe God can do that? He can. If all of us agree, facilities down the road. But let me ask you another one. <clears throat> we ask God to heal. Sometimes we might not always believe that. But can God heal? Certainly. Absolutely. God does things, again, what does it say? Beyond all that we ask or think. God has done some wonderful things in my lifetime. <clears throat> For me personally, even our church, churches I've been a part of, we simply ask, pray. What does he say as he continues? Now to him who is able to do above and beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. <clears throat> what works in you? I mean, if you, if, if you, if you live a life where you think, you know, that's, that's too much for God, then that's where you're going to stay. Everything for you about life and the expectations to come and even provisions for the future will always just be, well, that's just too much for God. I might as well just be happy with what I have. And again, I'm not talking about materialism. I'm not thinking about getting all the possessions. I'm not, you know, I'm not thinking about fill my pocket, Lord, or just, you know, I, I've seen some people, they'll go and pray. You know what they'll do? They'll get their wallet out <clears throat> and they'll start praying, God, fill it. <clears throat> You see, I only got a dollar. <clears throat> I might as well put that in there. <clears throat> but they'll hold that wallet out. God, fill it. Instead of asking God, fill me. Fill me. Fill me with your power, your spirit. Because that's the power. The power is within us. It's not a particular viewpoint. It's not a particular way of thinking of our, our presence. It's thinking of God's presence in us. And that's his Holy Spirit. Let me ask you to engage in personal worship more than you do. Okay. I know you probably do. You engage in personal worship wherever you are through the week, maybe on Sunday morning. But let me ask you to engage in personal worship more than you do. You'll begin to see a change take place. You'll begin to see confidence build when you pray. You'll begin to see results when you begin to pray. You'll begin to see things and how God moves when you begin to pray. And then it says in the last verse, <clears throat> to him be glory in the church to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever amen they sound like they're having a good time over there don't they we have our good time of praise and worship as well
They probably stand over there and they say, hey, man, they, they sing pretty good over there too. But God has a way that he serves our world. He has a way that he reveals himself to our world, our society, our community. He has a way of doing things that no one else can do. And he does it through the church. And folks, you are a part of that church. Hebrews chapter 10, as we close. Look at verse 22. It says, Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed in pure water. Let us hold on to the confession of our hope without wavering. And for he who promised is faithful. You see, anybody can come to church. Anybody can act like a member of a church. I've known people who've been members of a church a long time, and they've never had an experience of conversion. They've never known what it's like to, to give their heart to Christ, and they've sit there in the pew for years and years, never knowing the redemptive power of God's love. But he says, let us draw near with a true heart, full in full assurance of faith. Let us hold on to the confession of our hope without wavering. And I like this verse 24. He says, and let us be concerned. I think in the King James it says, let us consider one another. That means it ought to be on your mind. Kyle should be on your mind in your heart. I'm not taking away from Kyle, but also Jamie and her family. To be concerned about them. They should be on your mind. Debbie, as she shared, she should be on your mind. She, we, we ought to consider them, to think about them. And what does it say? Let us be concerned about one another. I get a text message from a church member at least once a week. And they encourage me. They say a few things, I'm praying for you. Good sermon. Things, you know, through the week. And that man, that just lifts me up. Makes me feel good. I say, Mado, thank you. you know. But it's encouraging to me. But let us be concerned. Let us be concerned about not just seeing a name on the, on the bulletin, but let us be concerned to the point of acting. We did that. We did something Wednesday night, Thursday, to help our family. And if there's other times when there's other needs, we'll help others as well. Out of the abundance of what God has done for us. Folks, that's the nature of the church. And he says, let us be concerned about one another in order to promote love and good works. Teaching a Sunday school is a good work, folks. Teaching a class is a good work. You might sit there and think, well, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know about that. You know, that's teaching a class. If you can tell somebody how to get to Walmart from here, you can teach class. I guarantee you, you can. Because the lessons are already there, you know. Just got to read it and study it a little bit. Got your class. So don't think you can't teach. Throw that out the window, that thought. But as we see, he says in verse 25, and not staying away from our worship meetings. In other words, not, you know, when church is going on, we ought to be driven to get there. Something's pushing me, urging me to get there. But it says, as some habitually do. Let me, let, me, let, me add, let, me, let me just say this. If your relationship with God <clears throat> doesn't get you to church, something's wrong. 
Amen? If your relationship with God cannot get you to the doors of the church and to the pew, something's wrong. As we've read in these passages, he says, don't stay away from the worship meetings, as some habitually do, but encourage one another. And all the more, as you see the day drawing near. And we saw the kids, <clears throat> Carson and the other kids, last night. They were in line. They were in that salt meat line. <clears throat> it was a long line, too, and they was about right in the middle. And I said, Carson, can you get me some salt meat? I'll give you some money. Because they was getting close to the front. They just kind of laughed at me like I wasn't serious. But I went on. I got my fried bread instead. But I said, I'll see y'all tomorrow. I don't know if they heard me or not, but I said, I'll see you tomorrow. Because I was looking forward to seeing them. Folks, the church, the church is his church. We just simply have the privilege of coming to be a part of Indian Nations Baptist Church. We're unique, we're more unique, we're, we're unique than any other church out there, even though we're right next door to this one. We're unique and different. And we have strength in that. We are diverse, but we have a mission to carry out. Will you say, I'm in, I'm all in? I have an interview question that I asked that Brother Sam sent me. Ministry philosophy. To me, it's like all in. Let's do it together. Let's work on it together. Let's solve the problems together and do what God has commissioned us to do. Let me ask you to bow your heads. simply by raising the hand of your heart, not your physical hand. But are you all in? Acknowledge that in your heart. Am I all in? Or do I need to get busy for the Lord? Do I need to serve him? You can do it here. The church is his church. Let's continue with that as a forefront of all that we do, it's his church. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do. Thank you, Lord, that we have this gathering that we call our church because we are the church. You are simply the head. You guide us. You direct us. You give us mission. You give us purpose. You give us a plan. We want to follow you. Lord, we encourage, we want to encourage one another to build up the church, not for a number's sake, but for the sake of reaching the lost for you. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. Not going to have a, we're not going to have a, a hymn of invitation. I just simply wanted you to acknowledge in your heart that you're all in. That's your personal testimony. That's your personal response to say, I'm all in. You know, it might not be a grand thing for you, something to do. You might, we, may, we may say, you know, let, let's just let's go clean up. I didn't sign up for that. but a willingness to do it and to serve the Lord. Here in just a few minutes, we're going to have a, uh, a meeting downstairs. Pray for that. Okay? Pray towards that meeting. And uh, let's just continue to do things in accordance with God's will. All right? All right, let's stand. We're going to sing, sing our invitation of him, our creek hymn. <clears throat> and then we'll be dismissed. <clears throat> All right. Let's sing out. Okay, don't be afraid. 
Jimigo sabi atit mo mo sindi mawais jin hit hit continue. Father, dismiss us with your love. Continue to abide upon us. Provide the needs of those who have without, those who have desires to serve, physical needs to be met, spiritual guidance as it is needed, and Lord, that we would praise you and honor you in all things. Lord, we just, we're, we're, just, we're just so happy today just to see Kyle with us today. From where he was to where he is today. Again, as a measure of your sovereign grace unto him. For Debbie, her loss. But Father, she's here worshiping you we're together we thank you for great victories we thank you for what may even seem like small prayer requests being met because you are worthy you are able and we thank you for that in jesus name amen amen, amen. <clears throat>